welcome folks to this um, session of the Prime Conference. And I wanna thank Tina Wartenberg and Joel and the other organizers for making this possible um, and persevering through COVID to, to bring us here. Um, and uh, so um, I am an economist. I'm director of the graduate programs in sustainability at Bard College. Um, and that includes an MBA with a focus on sustainability. It's one of the few MBA programs around the world that fully integrates a focus on mission-driven business and sustainability into a core MBA. Um, but we also offer MS degrees in environmental policy and climate science and policy and MED in environmental education. Um, and the way those things come together for me is that, you know, the education students want to change minds, the policy students want to change the rules, and the business students want to change the game, right? Because no matter how many minds we change and no matter how many rules we change, at the end of the day, it's up to business to figure out how we're going to get the lights on, get food on our table, get our health care in ways that radically reduce environmental impact um, uh, and also social impact, right? So um, our MBA students are as interested in issues of um, uh, gender equity and uh, uh, employing formerly incarcerated people um, as they are in climate change and water pollution because these issues are so intimately interconnected. Um, but today I wanna to focus on a project that's coming primarily out of our policy center. It's called Solve Climate by 2020. Um, and uh, the motivation is to tap into the deep concern that educators and business educators and educators in all disciplines really have about the trajectory of the planet um, in terms of global warming. So uh, two years ago now, 2018, uh, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change told us that we had until 2030 um, to very aggressively cut emissions if we were gonna hold the planet to 1.5 degree warming um, C. Um, and in fact, we need to do that to, to have any, uh, you know, uh, hope of, of achieving kind of a low end warming scenario somewhere between 1.5 and two degrees C. Um, so that's still on the table. We're still in that race. We haven't lost yet. Um, and uh, it's our obligation as educators to bring this and elevate this uh, and put this front and center to students on our campuses and not only the students in our classes, but really we need to figure out how to engage students across the curriculum and across the world in this conversation. Um, so uh, I'm gonna talk about an exercise in, in coordinated climate education, public education, that's gonna culminate uh, April 7th, which is a first Wednesday in April, um, in a global dialogue on the topic of the moment, which is really green recovery, right? So this is, um, this is a moment for aggressive action on the climate after four years of uh, stasis um, and backsliding. Uh, uh, the climate uh, activism has been married with the possibility and the need for uh, large scale government investment um, coming out of uh, the, the recession um, as, we, as we do hopefully uh, get, get a vaccine. Um, but the economy is still gonna be in terrible shape, um, but also uh, you know, fundamentally a focus on justice, right? Because we just cannot imagine simply paving over the world with, with solar power um, without thinking about the impacts on people and communities um, and ensuring that we have justice in the transition. Um, so um, that's the vision. Um, and I wanna talk with you about it for about 10 minutes and then have some dialogue about the challenges of engaging students across the curriculum in climate solutions conversation. Um, so uh, specifically on April 7th, what's gonna happen? Uh, we're gonna have uh, university hosted um, and high school uh, uh, webinars, uh, same day web webinars uh, at 100 locations ac across the world. So all 50 states, Puerto Rico, DC, um, and another 50 locations internationally. Um, and the focus of those same day webinars uh, is gonna be on green recovery, and ambitious solutions, feasible but ambitious solutions within those states and regions um, around climate. Um, and, um, you know, webinars are easy to organize, so it's not a heavy lift for the host institutions. Um, but by working together, we can leverage the, um, uh, the, the moment 
um, and really engage 100,000 students in a dialogue on that day. So 100 events, uh, we would shoot for engagement of 1,000 people in every regional event, um, either a live webinar or in the recorded version, um, and thereby engage 100,000 students in the conversation. And the way this is gonna work, and the only way it's gonna work, is if faculty across the curriculum assign these webinars as homework, right? Um, and talk about them in class. So that's really the vision of this kind of hashtag make climate a class story. Now, um, last year we did this just in the US primarily, we had about 43 states participating and five international sites. You can see some of the universities that hosted these webinars, B big success. And we had to pivot during COVID. These were gonna be live events, but we pulled them all together and created this webinar based format. Um, and uh, the energy is there for most of people to repeat. So we've got many of our states committed to uh, doing this again next year. Um, and, uh, and this year we're gonna expand, as I said, to a hundred uh, uh, sites worldwide. Um, and uh, uh, the sort of hashtags, solve climate by 2030, global climate dialogue, and this make climate a class that I wanted to focus on. Um, so again, this is an exercise in coordinated climate education. Um, and the, the idea is no one would turn, tune in to a webinar that I just organized on my campus and had three climate experts. You know, I might get 30 or 40 people tuning into a webinar like that. But if it's part of something global, and this is happening all over the world simultaneously, and you use that energy to engage faculty across the curriculum, then that's the way we're gonna build this to events that can really engage the attention of a generation um, across, across the world. Um, same day webinars in each state and many nations, focus on green recovery, justice in the transition, follow-up discussions in class, 50 international webinars, 50 US webinars, 100,000 students focused on climate solutions on April 7th. Um, again, this is coming out of my center at Bard. Uh, David Blockstein, who many of you may know, he's a longtime uh, educator in the environmental studies world, is co-leading this with me. Um, we have funding from the Open Society University Network. I've got a team of graduate students working on this. So we have the infrastructure in place. So we're very much positioned to deliver on this vision um, in the coming months. The other opportunity for your students that I wanna mention um, is that as part of this, we will have an online collaborative internship, um, social media for climate activism. This will start first week of February, it'll run 10 weeks. Um, and uh, the internship will meet for two hours online weekly. And then interns will in turn offer up three hours of social media work to help promote uh, the opportunity to faculty and students across the world. Um, this is a non-credit bearing opportunity. Um, so it's really just a resume opportunity for your students um, uh, and an opportunity for, to get uh, social media training from experts. Um, but of course, it could be taken as credit uh, if you offer a practicum. So if your students are required to do internships or you've got a one or two credit practicum course on your books, students can um, utilize this opportunity um, uh, to, uh, to fulfill that requirement. Um, and of course, the strategy here is that this is another way to promote engagement. Last year, we started out with 350 interns or people signed up to do the internship. I think the first night we had 170. Um, and that whittled down ultimately to about 60 people who went through the full 10 weeks. But it was a great volunteer army. They produced some really good online tools and models for us. So that's an opportunity. Please uh, take a note and let your students know about that. So basically the way these would run will be that Wednesday night, 5 p.m. local, we'll provide a, a brief uh, global introduction, a video. Then you attract three top speakers from your state or community to talk about ambitious but feasible policy ideas that could happen, uh, create jobs, uh, rewire the, 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 the state or region with clean energy, um, uh, 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 build regenerative agricultural solutions, uh, uh, weatherize buildings, um, ideas for each area, um, and then move on to as much kind of in-person or you know, uh, web, webinar-based dialogue as you'd like. Again, output 100,000 students. Strategy here is to really get college and high school faculty to assign these power dialogues, either live Wednesday night homework or recorded 
as homework. This is kind of the critical piece of this. And then have follow-up discussion in class. And we have templates available for those discussions across disciplines. So this is the hashtag make climate a class idea. We'll be asking every teacher you know, we'll ask you to ask every teacher you know in the world to assign their April 7th regional webinar as homework and talk about it either live or that we can class with their students. And we'll also ask you to ask every student you know in the world to ask their teachers to assign their April 7th regional webinar as homework and talk with them about it either live or in class. So there's this giant youth climate movement that should be demanding that there be climate education in their classes. And this is going to be a platform to support that demand and make it easy for teachers to meet that demand. So every teacher you know, and by that we mean literally every teacher you know, because you don't have to be an environmental studies or a business and sustainability teacher for your classes to participate. Because the challenges solving climate change range across all disciplines. And we have on our website, uh, uh, one page, very simple uh, instructions for how to do a one hour conversation about your webinar that really centers your discipline. Um, so uh, I'm not sure what the business one is, I can't remember, but for example, the music one, the stru structure is you talk about the video for the first 20 minutes, ask the students to respond. And then the second half of the class, you talk about the fact that, you know, you play a couple of songs, one from the labor movement and one from the uh, uh, civil rights movement, those kind of anthems that were powerful organizing tools. And then you ask the students, is there a climate change song? Is there a climate change anthem? And they can search around for a while, they won't find one, there isn't one. So then you can talk, why not? Why hasn't that emerged as a, as a tool for social activism? So we, we've got hour long conversational uh, things, perfect for Zoom, all lined up. And so that's why we need your help <clears throat> reaching out to colleagues across the curriculum to make this happen. So <clears throat> what's gonna happen beyond that? Well, again, these will be recorded, so you can use these as teaching tools throughout um, April and May, throughout Earth Month. Um, there will be a follow-on uh, report back. So we'll ask a student from each of the 100 institutions to join a webinar, and we'll give them each a minute to uh, summarize what are the three takeaways, you know, what, or what are one or two of the main takeaways. What does a green recovery look like in Bulgaria? What does it look like in Kyrgyzstan? What does it look like in Ghana? What does it look like in Korea? What does it look like in New Zealand, right? And I think that's gonna be very interesting, very inspiring to have that as a resource, to kind of summarizing what we've done. Um, Earth Day Network, other partnerships, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on how we could utilize this platform. What do we need from you? Well, we still have some states where we need a university host. Um, some people weren't able to, to re-up this year, um, or if you're from an international audience joining, uh, we don't have very many international sites yet, and we would love to have you. Again, this is a very easy lift, or you have colleagues that you would like to alert about this internationally. It's a very easy lift. You just have to put together a Zoom call, invite three prominent climate people. It puts you at the center of your regional or state conversation around climate change. It's great for visibility for your program. Everybody in your region will be tuning in. Um, so, but we do need to find those institutions that want to host. Um, and then once they're in place, we'd ask you obviously to promote these dialogues um, within your institution across the faculty. Um, and in particular, promote this idea of, of hashtag make climate a class. Um, <clears throat> that's our website, solveclimatebyt2030.org. Um, and what I'd like to do now uh, is just really drop out of the presentation mode. And we've got a fair amount of time for discussion. Um, so let me actually stop sharing. And now I'll, I'll continue to share. What I think I'll do is I'll pull up our website. And I'll, I'll put that up there while we're talking. Um, and then we can either have a group conversation or go to breakouts. So um, I can't really see because I don't, how many, how many participants do we have here, Gina? Can you tell me? Yeah, we have 50 participants, 5-0. Okay, 
So we, I think small groups will make sense, but let's field just a couple of, of, of um, general questions. Any, any thoughts or responses? Questions uh, we about have the some project? wonderful comments here. I don't know if you can see them, uh, Eben. Um, this sounds potentially very powerful, powerful way to take the discussion from individual institutions to the global level. Question, how many languages is this going to be in to reach the most students? Well, it will be in as many languages as we have host universities with different languages, um, which is exciting. Uh, so uh, we did one in Russian last year in Kyrgyzstan. Um, and uh, so uh, they'll definitely be happening in lots of different languages. Uh, one Wait, of the fun things have... about this is, is the opportunity to like have one, some students in your class watch the one from uh, uh, you know, Denmark and then have some watch the one from Costa Rica, right? And compare, right? So there's lots of really interesting uh, opportunities here to do cross national conversation. Great. You have some, uh, Sylvia Perez offering to do host one in Mexico, Cetis uh, oh, okay. Dad. Another one in um, Rajul to do it in Ontario, Canada at Conestoga College in Kitchener, Ontario. Um, Michael Yin from Singapore said they have something similar called Climate Conversation Series, but they would love a cross-border collaboration. Sure. We will save these chats and uh, we'll be sure to send them to you. Thank you so very Eben, much. Even have you already lined up um, hosts at, at uh, all the different locations or are you still searching for more? No, we have not. So uh, we have, I think we have like probably 25 states that are confirmed. Um, David Blockstein, my colleague, this in the next couple of weeks is reaching out to ensure, to try and nail down the people who did it last year to see whether they want to do it again. But uh, yes, if you have any interest at all in, in hosting or co-hosting for your state or region, please enter that in the chat and uh, we'll get back in touch with you. Le put your email there as well, if you wouldn't mind. So yeah, we can okay. reach out. Another one from Victoria, Canada, <laughs> a Royal Roads University. Yep, everybody who is responding that way, you can just put your email in uh, the chat. We will uh, follow up with you and get that to Eben. So Eben, perhaps uh, I missed uh, what kind of uh, preparation, qualifications, whatever, do you need from someone who would uh, be considered hosting? Enthusiasm <laughs> and, and a desire to really promote their an initiative uh, across their region. I mean, um, is, there, is there, I'm sorry, is there yeah. some kind of prepared uh, workshop material that you'll be supplying? No, really, we're just asking the hosts to put together, a, you know, a webinar uh, on the topic of green recovery, climate solutions, and a just transition, um, and make the commitment to bring in prominent, you know, folks who've got good ideas um, uh, uh, to, to drive the conversation. So it's a very easy lift, um, and, and then you'll be part of this community that's committed to offering up these opportunities across the world. Um, and, uh, and then once you've kind of done that, you've done that organization, we'd ask you to promote it as aggressively as you can within your region um, as an opportunity for, for students and faculty. Uh, um, you know, we're not, we, we're not like trying to target the, you know, the Harvards and Princetons of the world to, to host these. I mean, we don't, you know, we're, we're, we're just excited to work with educators in whatever venue that they, they you know, we're all very capable of, of identifying the top speakers and the, and the good experts in our communities and reaching out and asking them to participate. So we, we're excited to work with partners of all shapes so and sizes. I don't, I don't mean to dominate even, but uh, so it, it, it's not necessary for someone to show Oh, some key slides on what's happening with climate change or, or things like that. It's more bringing together speakers to uh, be, talk creatively about some potential solutions. It's all solutions focused. There okay. will be an introductory video, probably seven, eight minutes oh, that will okay. sort of set the context and the explanation yeah. for, the, for the day. Um, but then, you know, an hour goes very quickly. <laughs> so if you have three speakers who are knowledgeable about climate solutions in Tennessee, or Nebraska, or um, uh, uh, the Sudan, 
um, or um, um, uh, you know, whatever country or, or state you're focused on, that's really what you, the people you need to bring together with questions, you know, you'll, you'll easily use up an hour and a half. Yeah, so you will, you will supply a foundational video, is that correct? Yes, and let me show you the website here. So um, <clears throat> uh, if you go to the, the, this website and you can see, um, we've got, this was mostly US states with some international sites here, but so for example, if you clicked on Louisiana, um, you would have seen that it would take you to this page. So there was a dialogue last April that was hosted by Tulane University um, with the, here's their panelists, um, moderator. Um, and then uh, there's also a registration page. So if you go to that registration page, you can register for the Tulane event, although it's gone now, it used to be there. Um, so if you are one of the sponsors, if you're a host university, we will create for you, um, sorry, we will create for you kind of a homepage on our website, um, but you'll probably want to create one for yourself. So you might create an Eventbrite or whatever sign up tool that you want to use. Um, but, but you will have one, there'll be a link. <laughs> there will be a link from our page um, to your event. Uh, so you'll be part of this network. And is the, the video that you were referring to posted somewhere here even? The one from last year is available if you go to um, uh, click here to see your state webinar. The one, we'll make a new one for this year that's focused on green recovery, but here is the video from me. Uh, I can show you just a minute of it if it, here we go. So this is what you'll get, something like this. Sorry. Yeah, I believe I saw that one last year. Oh, never mind. Oh, don't touch <laughs> Trump. Do, don't do that. No, don't do that. Okay. Sorry. My, my apologies. Uh, okay. Oh my goodness. But anyway, the video essentially from that explains the project, it's seven minutes long. All right. So that's me talking about solar and wind power prices declining, that kind of realistic optimism that we want to talk about, that we actually can solve the energy half of climate change in the next 10 years. So I'll set up that conversation and then people will have follow on around their individual areas. I, I thought Kevin Webb made an interesting suggestion by loving to he, watch a webinar with indigenous leaders. I would yes. love to see if somebody would set something like that up with speakers. I bet you there the solutions would have a distinctly different quality than they would be from, uh, from others. We actually had a number of indigenous leaders on calls, and one of the things we're doing is editing them out and putting, uh, editing them in rather. We're, we're doing an edited version that just features indigenous voices from last year's conversation, from wow. Alaska, New Mexico, Oklahoma, and other places. So That's we did have another a number of indigenous um, voices because of the justice focus uh, of- Can the, I uh, speak on a minute? I've just done a 10 day embodiment one and they had indigenous leaders on there who were very, very good with lots of solutions for the environment and how to put people in touch. Because they said the biggest problem is that people don't make the connection. If people make the connection with the earth, they're more likely to do things. Sure. Um, and so, you know, that, that's a great perspective. And um, it's one of the ones that it was certainly shared um, about the, the sort of, actually, the, some people did very comprehensive kind of discussions in the United States context of, you know, uh, uh, the whole kind of Western colonization project and how that has, in fact, divorced us from nature and, you know, has upset balances and it's a need to recapture that that is fundamental. Um, so um, I'm wondering if... We You've been, I have a question. For 12 minutes. So I guess maybe we'll stay together then rather than do breakout groups. I think yeah. well, we don't have time for breakout groups. Yeah. Even I have a question for you. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> this is Dilip. Um, so this is obviously a lot of what of these kinds of events uh, are about increasing awareness and providing information. And my yes. question is, does that lead to a change in behavior? Is there an action bias to this? I know the word solution means that things are changing on the ground. 
So can you share how this translates into action? Or maybe it's too soon to tell. I, I'm just asking. Well, what I would say is that this is an educational initiative, okay. right? Um, and education by its definition is not action. <laughs> um, uh, last year, we attempted to point people um, in the direction of, you know, what should you do as, as individuals, as students? And we said the most important thing you can do to solve climate change by 2030 is to volunteer for a political campaign for a candidate of your choice, right? And that we tried to focus the message, the solutions message, the immediate solutions message around that. Um, and we obviously had a platform, you know, there was big campaigns coming up that were very important. So it was an obvious thing to do. Um, this next year, um, it's, I think it might be challenging for us to come up with a single thing to recommend that students do. Um, we do have on our resources page, um, uh, the link to uh, Deb Rowe's uh, Beyond Gloom and Doom website, how to take action on clean energy. Um, and that, that's really a nice sort of a, a toolkit place for students to get involved in, in US state uh, politics and policy to drive solutions. Um, so we have resources on our resources page. We do need to come up with some sort of shared message that we do want to try and push out uh, through this educational platform um, about what should you do next? I mean, what should you do uh, during Earth Month, for example, um, uh, to really make a difference? Um, and, uh, you know, not sure what that will be. We'll try and be as consistent in our messaging as we can. Um, but remember, there's, you know, five people who are working on this part time to full time. So we have limited ability to even track efforts and accountability following this initiative. It yeah. is decentralized. So we're really counting on the people who host the videos. And of course, each of the presenters will have their own ideas about what would be the next steps in Idaho or in Mexico or in Peru or in, you know. So it will be a conversation about solutions and it will be a conversation about what you can do, but that will be very different in different places across the planet. Yeah, so one of the starting points for um, personal changes, changes in your personal life could be Drawdown uh, has some sure. ideas there, but there are obviously many other lists and uh, initiatives. Yep. Yeah. So even this is uh, this comment uh, coming up here it says in no way meant to be a criticism of this wonderful effort. Uh, and in terms of uh, education, I know you're well aware of the idea of action learning as an education format, learning by doing. And it'd be interesting to see, suggest as we evolve this uh, uh, to uh, encourage various people in places to take an action learning approach where they can involve the students in inaction and then bringing that back uh, as a vehicle for learning. That's a great point. We believe in that wholeheartedly. I know you, do. you know, in our in terms of our, our educational programming at Bard and other places. Um, what I would say is that um, for the for the volunteers who are all organizing this, I mean, we're mobilizing probably a thousand volunteers behind this initiative, and so for them, this is action learning, right? Um, they're learning how to organize webinars. They're learning how to do outreach, communication, organizing. So. Um, there are a number of people that are taking action right through this process and learning yeah. skills that are effective in, in communication. Um, for the, for the audience, the recipients of, of kind of the information, um, uh, and we're also asking faculty, right, actually, and students across the curriculum to take action, right, in the sense that we're asking them to go outside their comfort zone um, to, uh, to talk right, about this issue. Um, so, you know, in the process of, of mounting all of these conversations, we're asking a number of people who otherwise wouldn't be doing that to do that. So I think uh, by empowering people to just realize that they can actually talk about climate change in their biology class or their economics class or their literature class, um, that that will be helpful. Um, now, obviously, you know, it's not 
you know, shovels in the ground, building solar panels or planting trees or anything like that. Um, and, um, but that's a good idea to take in mind. And if there's some, we've talked, we've talked about that, that maybe, maybe the outcome of one of these events, because we're going to do them every year, right? This is going to build to 100 institutions next year. We're hoping, you know, 300 institutions the next year, 1,000 institutions the following year or more, right? Um, that we want to use that first Wednesday in April to be a focusing day to discuss progress towards solving climate by 2030. Um, and one could imagine that that could become something where everybody, you know, we're a million people or two million people who are participating in the future would all do something. And we're not quite sure what that something would be, but um, that's a place you could go. That's great. It's it's sort of activist one on one. Yep. Any other questions or ideas that would be helpful for us? Well, let me throw out one more idea that we found very useful in terms of getting the whole campus engaged, um, because one of the I think the trick to doing cross campus um, educational engagement. Um, is to really get faculty engaged because if you've got faculty involved then you're going to get by definition students because they're going to require it or offer it as extra credit or whatnot and the easiest way to do a climate event on your campus that attracts lots of interest um, when you can be there in person or even online actually um, is to hold a mini teach-in one night teach-in where you ask 16 or 20 faculty from your community not experts not outside experts um, to come and each talk for five minutes about climate change from their disciplinary perspective, okay? So, and you can design, it's easy to design panels that do this. So panel B, climate science, what you need to know. Get a philosophy professor to talk about, is it too late? They love talking about that. Get a geology professor to talk about sea level rise. Physics professor to talk about responding to skeptics. Chemistry professor to talk about how hot is it gonna get? Or, Winning the story wars, you know, business professor to talk about technology leadership or uh, English professor to talk about Wi Fi and, you know, the sort of the literature world, um, uh, religion professor to talk about stewardship. So, you know, you, you can easily create avenues for concerned faculty who aren't experts to nevertheless weigh in for five minutes and then have a good 20 minute conversation following. And if you get 16 or 20 faculty members, uh, from your university doing something together on a night, you're going to get 200 or 400 students just because they're going to require their students to show up. And it becomes a much more powerful conversation than the standard climate event, which, you know, is going to be a movie or a talk or whatever that's going to bring in, you know, 30 or 40 of the usual suspects. So just want to throw that out as an organizing idea um, separate from the, the solve climate kind of webinar structure because that's not going to be enough, right? Just one day is it's good and, and it's empowering and we're going to get a lot of people involved on that day, but we need to keep the conversation going. And this is a, a very easy thing to organize. It's the kind of thing, if you've got a graduate student assistant or, or an undergraduate assistant, they could do most of the work. If you just give them the framework, um, it's easy to pull off and a good way to engage lots of people. Um, so with that, any other thoughts or questions about effective ways to get lots of students engaged in climate conversation? One thing I've heard about is the meet <coughs> Mondays, promote that more and explain why we need to stop eating meat. Meet this one Monday. That's actually one of the features on our Entergy app, and we have a contest going right now about Meatless Monday. Uh, Dana Smith, the head of it, uh, kicked off this conference on Monday morning. So yeah, so Eben, we will definitely uh, post your, send me your PowerPoints, we will post them. If you have any requests, we could post that specifically on our website and promote it. We have people here from uh, more than 60 countries over a thousand people have signed up for this conference. So, and I see a lot of people uh, wanting to support this. So Good. excellent, we're so excited, this is great. Well, Gina, uh, if at some point we could yeah, just provide a little blurb or, or link to the yeah. people that did, weren't able to come to this session about the opportunity. Uh, and I would say that internationally, we actually have money here. So we have uh, several $3,000 stipends that oh, could wow. go to graduate students uh, 
organizers. So right. not here in the US, but for international institutions. Um, so people should be aware of that um, and we can have a further conversation about it. Right, and you could send me a blurb and I'll post it, we'll post it on our website along with your presentation. Okay, That's that amazing. sounds great. Very exciting. Right. We may solve climate by 2030 wouldn't that be amazing yes and i could talk about how that could happen i mean that's part of this too no, so I mean, I've, I've not a pipe dream we can do that so. All right. okay can i add, add one more thing on one webinar i went on they also said we need to teach students how to talk to the parents who are skeptical mm -hmm. yeah. sure. exactly thank you so much Eben. pleasure good to talk to you outstanding Eben. outstanding thank, thank you. you wonderful bye -bye. great thank you